Hello everyone and welcome. This is a talk about infrastructure, server provisioning and configuration management tool written in Groovy. In this session I will be presenting what infrastructure is, I will cover its basic principles and um, I will show you how to start working with it. Uh, before we start, a few words about myself. My name is Stanislav Turikov. Um, I've been working in software development for about 13 years. Um, I started as a Java developer and uh, when I completely moved to development operations. Currently, I'm taking care about cloud infrastructure at Payworks, which is a fintech company from Munich. Um, I love infrastructure automation as well as I love DSL development using Groovy. I also a founder of infrastructure IO project, so I can say this information is from the first hand. Um, short history about infrastructure. Um, it's a kind of young project. I started developing infrastructure in January of 2017. Um, before doing it, I used Ansible as my main tool to provision servers. And um, in general, I can say that I like the way Ansible works, but um, at this moment of time, I needed a something more programming friendlier. And uh, at the same time, I would like to keep simplicity of Ansible and uh, the principle that we don't have to install any additional software on the target hosts. And uh, when it comes to infrastructure as a code, I think that it's not only important what exactly the tool can do, but also it's important how to express the configuration of the code. Um, small question, how many of you uh, somehow do DevOps? All right, very good. And uh, how many of you use automation and provisioning tools for this? All right, very good, very good. Um, so let me introduce you infrastructure, what is it? Um, in general, infrastructure, it doesn't provide any uh, kind of um, new ideas about infrastructure automation because, of course, this idea is not new and um, if you're familiar with tools such as Ansible or Puppet, SaltStack, you already know what is it. If not, I will give you a, a general idea. Using such tools, you can describe server configuration as code. You can um, store this configuration configurations under source control system. You can run this configuration to get your host into a desired state. State. You can also install system packages, change configuration files. You can roll out new releases of your services. Um, you can also run custom commands to fetch information from remote machines, or you can um, get any information from your machines if you want. Uh, the specific about infrastructure is what it's based on Groovy DSL and um, everything which you can do with Groovy, you can do with infrastructure. You can use loops, you can use conditions, you can use closures, whatever you want. Infrastructure is portable by itself, but it requires G uh, GVM to run. Uh, it's flexible, it gives you a lot of freedom how to organize your code. And uh, it's Unix oriented. It's initially designed to work with Unix based hosts. Uh, infrastructure is angelless. I, no need to pre-configure your target host. You don't have to install any specific engine to run infrastructure on your target machines. But you have to provide SSH connection to it. It has minimal dependencies on the host side. It can be just few POSIX utilities like cat, t, make dir, copy, file, and a little bit more maybe. How to get started with it? First of all, you need to install infrastructure. You can do it uh, in uh, two ways. First one, you can just go to GitHub page and uh, download a zip file. You can unpack it and it will have a pretty same structure as Maven or Gradle. Uh, there is a bin directory and the infrastructure binary file. You can just run it and that's it. <coughs> or you can build it from source code. So source code is organized using uh, Gradle build tool. So just check out and run Gradle, that's it. Uh, when you need to create a provisioning script using your favorite source code editor, doesn't matter which one, which you want. And when you can run a provisioning script with infrastructure command line interface. 
A provisioning script usually consists of two main parts. First one is inventory, which defines a set of nodes. It can be bare metal service, it can be virtual machines you want to configure. And uh, the second part usually it's a provisioning plan. Provisioning plan defines tasks and actions to run on the nodes. You can define as many inventories and as many provisioning plans in the same file. All right, let's take a look how it works. So let me switch to code editor and I will create a very simple infrastructure script. First of all, I will define an inline inventory. This inventory will um, provide information about nodes in the same file where the rest of the configuration is defined. I will define inline inventory this way. Now I need to define a node I would like to configure. I will give it an ID. I will provide a host. I will provide a username to connect. And I will provide a private key file. So this is an inventory definition. So it, it contains only a single node, but I can specify as many as I want. So but for the first example, is enough to have a single one. And when I need to define a provisioning plan, which will contain a set of tasks, I would like to run on this machine. Let's call it show uptime. Typically, a single task consists of a set of actions. Here I can run an action. So this action will execute a shell command on the target machine. Uptime, uptime prints information about how long your horse has been running. And uh, I would like to print it in my console. Death result. So here we go. Uh, I will print node ID. Uh, information about node is available in this context. So every action, every uh, list of actions can access this information. And I will print uptime. Uptime. So that's it. Let's try this out. Um, to run the script, I need to run infrastructure command line interface. Uh, I will specify run command, and I will specify a file I would like to run. This is introduction GUI. So here we go. Oh no, it doesn't work. Nice. What's name there? Yes, you're right. Thank you very much. Let me try it again. Looks like I cannot connect. Nothing works on the first attempt. Keys DevOps, pen DevOps. So, ah, that's it. Actually, you can see the output. It executed successfully. So, when you can see the output of the uptime command, So that's how it works. In this output, you can see the task we run and um, the output of the command itself. So you might want to ask, what is it? What's IP? How? Which host I actually connected to? Um, I use Vagrant to run these examples in the session, and I can check status, Vagrant status. You can see that there are three virtual machines are running on my machine at this moment of time. And I can show you a uh, Wayground file, which defines these machines. Um, 
10 0 0 10 10 0 0 11 10 0 0 12 and 10 0 0 30 I will be using this information uh, for all examples um, in this session all right but how it works inventories let's talk a little bit about inventories there are many ways how you can define your inventory first and the simplest way is inline inventory that means that you will define your nodes in the same file where provisioning script is defined as i did in the first example uh, second way you can define file inventory using file inventory you can basically create additional file put all the declaration inside this file and when you can use this file um, in multiple provisioning scripts if you have any you can share this information between multiple provisioning scripts and of course uh, there is a cloud integration initial one it's aws inventory aws inventory can read information from a set of nodes from ec2 service and converts it to a set of nodes which can be also provisioned by infrastructure plus um, there is docker inventory for testing only it can run a set of docker containers and use them as nodes plus there is one more it's a managed aws inventory it's an experimental feature it can not only it cannot just connect to aws account it can also create updates and delete ec2 instances and when provision inline inventory as you could see in the first example inline inventory provides you a way to define everything you want to provision in a single file but at the same time inline inventory can give you a little bit of freedom how to define these nodes um, for example i can define two more nodes let me do it this is a single line definition but if you don't like this syntax you can choose another one like node machine to host 10 0 0 12 and you can basically copy all this information to multi-line definition so with the way of declaration we are in the identical and uh, you can just choose which one you prefer and another way basically you can mix it if you do this way just let me copy it quickly All this declaration we will produce the same result. So you will have four nodes in your inventory. And I can run it. Ah. Yes, I see. Right, thank you. Do it this way. So yes, here we are. The task has been executed on the four machines. In this case, I can move some attributes to in line to the first part of declaration, or I can leave it in multi-line state if I want to. File inventory. File inventory takes an inventory of definition from an external GUI file. You can also use loops or overgroove tricks to organize the definition so everything which you can do with inline inventory you can basically put to external file let me show you how it works here I have a special file where I declared absolutely same which uh, was declared uh, in an inline inventory and here how can we define file inventory so in this case if I have multiple provisioning scripts I can basically reuse the same inventory and I can define inventory in a single 
file. Uh, I can specify more than just a single inventory. So this attribute accepts uh, an array of strings. So that means that I can create multiple files. If I have multiple inventories like blue and green, I can do it. And let's run it. It produces pretty same result. All right, AWS inventory. AWS inventory can read a set of EC2 instances from AWS and convert it to a set of nodes. A provisioning plan will be applied for this set of nodes. Um, to be able to run AWS inventory, you need to provide uh, AWS access key ID, AWS access secret key, and region because infrastructure uses AWS API to read this information from uh, the service and when it will uh, convert this data to an inventory and when it can be applied and run. I have an example for AWS inventory as well. Let's take a look on it. Here is my AWS inventory. I specified AWS region, which is EU central one. I have a special AWS access key and the AWS secret key I can specify by asking user to enter it. When I will put this information to AWS inventory instance, plus I will provide username and key file. Uh, that means that all instances should have the same user and same key file which I will use to connect to it. And I can also say, I can also specify um, do we want to use public IP addresses or private IP addresses because sometimes uh, AW instances have more than just one IP address. Plus I can specify text if I want to apply initial filtering. If I don't want to work with all EC2 instances which I have in this specific region, I can say only specific instances. If an instance has uh, managed uh, true tag, that means this instance will be added to AWS inventory. If not, it will be basically skipped. And when the same situation as you could see with uh, inline inventory and uh, with uh, file inventory, I can run it. Let me check. <laughs> All right. So I have this inventory. I just need to execute it. Now infrastructure asks me about um, to provide access secret key. I will copy it. Well, so I have three AWS machines with three public IPs, and I can check its, its uptime. Do you have any questions about inventories? So if you are familiar with Ansible provisioning script, you may find it pretty similar. Of course, there is a kind of difference, but conception is the same. A provisioning plan. A provisioning plan consists of a list of tasks which are executed one by one. It's possible to define several provisioning plans for the same inventory in a single file. So here is an example of provisioning plan which contains three tasks. And of course, I will show you an example how to work with it. The core element of provisioning plan is a task. Task definition usually consists of human readable task name, um, filtering expression to define a subset of nodes to run on actions on, and uh, level of parallelism plus a list of actions to run on the nodes. Let's check how it works and what is special about it. Mm 
So here you can see in line inventory with four nodes defined. I refactored it a little bit to eliminate duplicates. And um, here I have a definition of a single task, the same which you could see as the first example. And um, let's say I, do I would like to run it in parallel. I would like to run this task in parallel on multiple machines. To do so, I can easily define level of parallelism. Let's say two. In this case, this task will be executed first on two nodes and then on two second nodes. Save it. So let me add. You can see it on two nodes first, and it's running on two second nodes. Here we go. And it was a little bit mixed. So first and zero and two and three. And uh, there is another feature which I called um, magic filters. You can define tags. filter and if I would like to run a task only on a specific nodes I can do it this way in this case the task will be executed only for machine 0 and machine 1 in parallel for both of machines. I can add more tags. Let's say gateway Let's do it this way. And if I want to apply additional conditions, I can do it like this. Yes. In this case, the task will be executed only for a single node, which is machine one. I can also use negation or I can also use all over um, boolean operators. Don't ask me how it was implemented, but I guess you know, you have some ideas about how we can do it. And um, if you're curious, you can take a look at GitHub. Uh, sources are available, you can check Do you have any questions? All right. So, next topic is actions. Currently, there is a set of actions which has been implemented. Um, these actions can work with many different um, aspects of uh, configuration management. Um, you can apply a closure with a content of not context you can connect to a host to check if a uh, specific IP address is available uh, port available you can um, uh, create directories files you can upload uh, content of file using templates you can retry some 
actions or list of actions. You can, uh, of course, execute shell commands. You can create users. So this is just an initial set because, well, it's a young project and not that complicated and not that comprehensive that it could be. But, um, you know, during um, production usage of uh, infrastructure, uh, me and my team, we have not uh, found um, any additional actions we need to have. So we do many things with infrastructure. We configure many complicated aspects of our Linux machine, but at the same time we have not found anything else we need to implement in case of uh, actions. So, but if you have any idea, you can contribute. So it's an open source project. So I'm very welcome to see pull requests. Actions, fine. All right, another topic is if you uh, don't want to hard code any values in your scripts. You can use external configs, you can use runtime parameters, and of course you can use user input. Let me show you how it works. First of all, let's check how we can pass uh, runtime parameters using command line interface. Here I have a special example. It's command line interface. As you can see, this is undefined variable. So basically, infrastructure will try to resolve this variable using the context of the script, and um, this variable needs to be set to this context of the script, and infrastructure can do it if we run it with a specific option. Here I can specify a command. Let it be config grep. This way I can get information about IP addresses my machine are using at this moment of time. So you can specify any command you want. And basically, as you can see, this variable it has been resolved uh, from command line. Another way you can use, you can ask a user for input. You can ask user to provide some additional information you want. There are two ways and two approaches. Uh, first one, when you can just echo in this uh, variable and this value uh, on screen. And another one, when you want to provide a kind of password and you don't want to print this password on a screen. Let me show you how it works. User input. Again, the same inventory and special command input where you can provide a message to say what you really want. And uh, I will print this comment just to show you the variable. And again, I will uh, provide, I will run this comment on the target machines. Six user input. Here is the uptime of my machines. All right. I can use secret true. By default, secret is false. I'm again asking about to enter a value, uptime. So this is a same example, but there was no information about which command I run. So in this case, it's printable and it's visible. 
and uh, in this case I cannot see anything so it's perfect for uh, asking a secret all right and if you don't like both of these approaches with parameters and input you can put your information your specific configuration because it can be multiple values you don't want to ask all the time for a set of values it can be dozen of different configuration parameters you can create a file which has a structure of um, which config slurper support so this configuration file will be parsed with config slurper and you can just use this uh, object uh, to initialize anything else you want to do you want to initialize. So I have uh, created a file. This is example config. Here I defined command, username, and key file. And in this example, I will use config action to load these configuration parameters. I will assign it to CVG variable and when I will use parameters from this variable from this map um, to run the rest of the script external configs so of course it will be produ it will produce the same result as you could already see so here we go do you have any question about external configuration parameters, input, anything? Oh, all right. This one. External? Yes, let me show you. Sample conf. But of course you can use hierarchical and tree-based uh, approach like defining profile x and this is the next example about so um, there is a way to define uh, default settings which can be a machine specific. If you have experience working with Maven build tool, uh, you probably know that there is a setting XML file which uh, is uh, in M2 uh, directory of your home folder. And um, here uh, there is implementation of the same idea. You can create uh, directory dot infrastructure and uh, create a file settings dot groovy where you can define some data which will be available by default to your script and um, there is a idea of uh, implementation of profiles uh, let me show how it works because when you can specify profile with using minus p option and only uh, set of settings which defined within this profile will be applied so in this case i need to create this file profiles in this example I don't have username and key file defined I will now create a settings file a settings GUI file and I will define it where Good. By the way, you can connect to your host not just using key file but with password if you want, but usually it's not the best practice. Oops. Yes. So 
So this is profiles, example. As you can see, I was able to execute this comment. That means that this information, username and file, somehow um, was resolved. I can run it with debug option L3. In debug output, you can see that we are loading settings from default file and the name of the file right here, loading system settings from file, here system, system settings which will be applied to the execution and effective settings which we can see after merge because if you use the same username and key file it will be overridden So initially username was defined in the settings file, but since I overwrited it with command line option, I have it as test, not as, not as a DevOps, and of course I cannot connect of indication fail. And I see this beautiful stack trace. And let me show you how profile works. In this file, I can create, let's say, two profiles. Test. And life. So now I have two profiles, test and life. I will save it. Here I can run it with profile test. I can specify a profile using minus p option. I will run it. Let me show you how it works. And I can run it with profile life. Let's me activate debugging. It's activated. So of course it's failed because the username now is taken from an over profile. It's live user now. So for the test profile it's easier and it's workable because the username is correct. It can be quite handy if you have multiple environments when you want to use some authentication information or secrets or any over configuration for a specific environment and uh, an overset of values for an over environment. <coughs> All right. External actions. It's possible to move some actions to run uh, to an external file to create a reusable procedure for several provisioning scripts. To run the procedure, we can use combination of apply action and load utility function. Let's take a look at it. Actions. So when you want to define not just a reusable inventory with information about your nodes. You can also define reusable procedures. And the basic example can be a local reusable procedure. Let's call it local actions.
Put me around the first. Mm. <coughs> this way. Closure. Here we'll specify local actions. The interesting thing about local actions and why I need to use apply function to execute this set of actions is that uh, infrastructure will pass not context to this uh, set of actions, to this execution. That means that, for example, shell action, it knows um, which node to run on at this moment of time. And we don't have to specify something like node shell and then run an action. So if we use it in a different task with a different set of nodes, it will also know to which node nodes we need to apply it. Let me run it. Yes, it works. You can see the output. And now we can let's load some actions from external file I will remove this because um, the idea is same we can take this information from external source let me show you what kind of actions I have here mm -hmm. this is create user dot groovy here I have a definition of external actions and uh, I can pass parameters to this action and when I can use all existing actions which are available for uh, normal execution context. So I can run shell scripts, I can specify from which user I would like to I would like this uh, action to run. I can specify a command and uh, when I, for example, can create a file. This basic procedure creates a new user and gives it uh, sudo permissions to run sudo commands. And when I will print information that the user has been created. So let me run it. So the username will be my admin. If I would like to provide parameters, I can basically specify a map of actions so we can uh, pass as many data as we want. And of course, we can reuse these external actions um, in multiple provisioning scripts. Let me run it. So it's been created. All right. Do you have any questions about external actions or internal one? All right. Let's take a look at some security features. Um, infrastructure allows you to encrypt and decrypt files with sensitive data. And when uh, infrastructure can use these files uh, within actions. Um, in the case of sensitive data, we can safely, in this case, sensitive data can be safely stored under source control. There are two supported mods, full. Uh, when we can encrypt completely a file, all with content entire. And uh, when we uh, have an overway, we can just encrypt a part of the file. Something like uh, you want to encrypt only passwords, but you want to keep all other options uh, to be available in an open way. For example, it can be handy when you want to compare two files, when you want to see what exactly can be changed. You can see, for example, what some values um, were not changed, but some values uh, were changed. Encryption can be done using common line interface, using encrypt command, as well as decryption with decrypt1. Infrastructure uses AS and base64 encoding to do this operation. So this is my configuration file I would like to encrypt. First of all, I will encrypt it entirely. Let me show you how it works. Mm -hmm. 
So to encrypt a file, I can use encrypt command. Infrastructure. Encrypt. Oh, yes, I see. Thank you very much. Encrypt. Should work now. Um, I will be asked about the password, which I need to use. Let me enter one. Now this file is encrypted. Let's check its content. Right, let's do it this way. Now the content of the file was replaced with encrypted content. But if I would like to take a look at content again, I can use decrypt command. And I can see it decrypted again. And um, the good thing about encryption and decryption is what you can use existing command like upload and template to use this encrypted data and upload it or use it as a template and uh, it will be available in a decrypted way on your target machine. So let's try this out. Decrypted it. Infrastructure run minus F. That's an example. Then encryption full. So now I'm asked about to enter decryption encryption key. So you can see that this is uh, an action to be executed on a single node. I'm asked for a decryption key, of course with a secret attribute, and when I will use upload action to upload this file to a remote machine, and it will be stored in home DevOps decrypted full configuration. When I will print the content of this file, just to demonstrate you how it works. So you can see it was decrypted successfully. All right. Another way, it's a partial encryption. Let's take a look how it works. I have a pretty same example. But here I use template action and uh, I can specify not just a decryption key, but mod which I would like to use. It can be full or it can be part. But before encryption of a configuration file, I need to prepare it a little bit. I need to specify which part of the file I would like to encrypt. I can do it this way. So let me run it, encrypt part, and I will specify option. All right, let's take a look at it. As you can see, the value was replaced with an encrypted one, and now uh, encrypt function uh, was replaced with decrypt one. And now let's run the example. So of course. We'll provide a decryption key and I have it in um, open text. Yes, here we go. So there are only two actions which supports encrypted and uh, encrypted information. Uh, this is template and um, upload. Template supports both full encryption and partial encryption, but upload supports only um, full encryption. With upload, you can use 
uh, you can use it to upload some kind of binary data with template. It also it only works with uh, text data. Yes, this is the slide about this, so I just said <laughs> you can use a plot and template function and you can choose the mod you would like to use. So, this is it about infrastructure. You can find some links. Um, if you have any questions about how it works, you can, of course, ask me, so I will be happy to. So, as far as I understand, ROS it's a way where you can reuse a part of logic to apply to several machines if you want to have the uh, same configuration for several machines. In this case... Infrastructure does not have such things, but um, you can create a set of um, external actions and uh, reuse it in many projects you have. So infrastructure general supports reusable uh, configuration files, which you can apply for multiple machines, but there is no uh, repository which can help you to stop this quickly. Yes, you're welcome. Only on the main machine. You don't have to install Java on your target machines. On target machines, you don't have to install anything. Only SSH connection is required. If you can connect to a target machine with uh, uh, password or private key file, it should work. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes, that's true. We do use immutable infrastructure. The way how it works for us, we create Amazon image, we build an image, and when we roll out it. And only environment-specific configuration, uh, for example, we have on live, we have one proxy, on test environment, we have another proxy URL. We will tune it on uh, the latest stages. But in general, we know that we apply our configuration from the, uh, for a clean image. So that's why we guarantee consistency of it. We, in general, do not like the approach when we need to modify an existing service. So we just uh, use the clear one. If you want to have a new configuration, we terminate the server and we pr uh, create a new one. That's it. Yes, thank you. Any other questions? Tasks are running sequentially only, but you can specify level of parallelism for uh, nodes uh, which are going to be updated with a specific task. So there is no way to say like uh, these two tasks, please run it in parallel. <laughs> so far it's not supportable, yes. On only for multiple nodes. Parallelism only works on um, node based. Any other questions? Yes. If you want to start with it, 
Um, you can just download zip file, unpack it, and run it. Um, what file? You can just down download a zip. That's it. From the project, from the GitHub. Yes, exactly. And that's it. You can unpack it. The, con the structure of the file is pretty same as Maven. Maven has a bin directory. Inside bin directory, you can find MVN executable file. And this structure is uh, the same for Gradle, I guess, and uh, for infrastructure as well. Or you can basically build it from sources. You can download uh, source code, run Gradle, and it will produce a binary for you. Well, if you need some help, I can just, I'm, I'm here for, for, for all days of conference. We can sit and I can demonstrate you how it works. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you very much.